Hey, a snail goes into a local police station and he says he was mugged by a turtle. Well, the police officer asks him to describe the incident. The snail says, I can't. (laughs) It all happened too fast. (laughs) I like it, Bob. You should. I got the chuckles this week. I drank two cups of coffee. Can you tell? (laughs) I, I don't know. Are you the snail or the turtle? The snail. Welcome to Word Rango, the game show where dictionary definitions produce knowledge and comedy. Four words enter, one word leaves, and is crowned champion. Our steely nerve competitors, a writer, another writer, a voice actor, and that other guy. And now it's gloves off. And set your dictionaries to fun. It's time for Word Rango. Here's your host, Mike Suzak. Welcome to Word Rango. My name is Mike Suzak. We have just, oh, words. That's just what's going on. That's what's up. I'm joined this week by the poop waterfall, Bob Ball. <laughs> Mike Colin is the amazing race. Uh, Dave Finkel. <laughs> I'm doing a can opener off the top right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to need you to tell me in a few seconds what that means. And uh, and doing playing the part of Ryan Lewis this week is our dear friend, uh, friend of the show, and also fellow astronaut Eric Felice. Oh, thank you for having me. Thanks. Great to be here. Uh, thank you for joining us from space. <laughs> um, it's it's awesome. I, I'm happy that, you know, I like when we do the guest thing every once in a while. We've done this a couple times before, and each time it's it's a new experience. It's fun. And yeah. uh, and, and I think the cool thing is that it's it, every time we try and tell people about the premise of the show, they think it's so damn strange. Because what we do here is we give people words. It's like literally reading the dictionary to people and then making a show about it. And somehow it's always funny to us, and we hope it's funny to you guys. And uh, Eric, I'm happy that you can be a part of that this week. Uh, Dave, what the hell is a can opener? <laughs> you don't know what a can. You've never done a can opener before. What the hell are you talking? Is it an upper decker? Is that what you're talking no, about? No, it's like a move when you jump into a pool or something. Like Swimming you jump in, moves, yeah. yeah, and you keep your like left leg straight, and then you like bring your knee up to your chest with your right leg, and you put your arms around that, and you fall in. You kind of look like a can opener. The point of a can opener is to make the biggest splash possible. Yeah, you can you can make pretty crazy, insane splashes. Maybe it's an oh. East Coast thing. I don't know, but I thought the, you were. I thought you were playing off the fact that Bob is like really sick and. Well, if he's need- a poop waterfall, I'm jumping off the top <laughs> of the poop waterfall and I'm doing a massive uh, can opener. We're talking like sick fifty feet drop, sick fifty feet vertical. Just yeah. poop all over everybody. <laughs> yeah, you know. All the this sounds like you're playing the home version of the game. I have food poisoning right as we speak. And it's hilarious. It's the best thing that's ever happened to us. And 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 it just goes to show our commitment to you guys. We don't stop even when Bob Ball is food poisoning. We're not Ryan Lewis. We don't go on vacations (laughs) with our family. We don't do Macklemore. Yeah, and Macklemore. We don't go on tour with Macklemore. Don't go on tour now. And uh, but what we do is we invent X games like poop waterfall can opener diving <laughs> and like you know that's 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 what's up and what is also spoiler up, alert in that game there are no winners <laughs> what is what is also up is uh, our words this week we got to get this thing started I love doing this when we have guests here Eric you are our guest of honor I'd love for you to get us started what what's your word this week Eric absolutely my word is a besedarian. <laughs> Besedarian. A Besedarian. Sounds like a, it sounds like a fucking race on Star Trek. A Besedarian. <laughs> a, a best, uh, <laughs> Man, uh, whatever happened to Jean Luc? Oh, dude, he went to the Besedarian homeworld. <laughs> they like fucking cut him in half, man. It's like, dog, those are Besedarians. They're shrewd, shrewd people. Remember that time that Counselor Troy made out with all of them? Oh, that was hot. <laughs> yeah. She got Asbestosarian. Uh, Bob, how do you think this thing's spelled? Uh, a bes a besedarian. Let's uh, let's go with the traditional English spelling. Uh, a b e s a d a r i a n. Mm. A besedarian. Close, but no cigar. <clears throat> what is it? How do you a- spell it? A b e c e d a r i a n. A besedarian. This besedarian. is a cool word. I love oh, that C. Oh, in yeah, there. well, that's the that's the European spelling. Well, it's Anglo-American, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the, the the waspy wordage. 
Uh, Dave, I want you to get us started with, uh, with a guess here. What do you think oh, a Bessadarian well, dude, means? I actually know what a Bessadarian means because um, I've actually experienced an a Bessadarian. Okay. Uh, <laughs> one summer after high school, um, I worked at a Best Buy, right, in the TV department. <laughs> and so there's like this contest between all the salesmen. It's like who can sell the most TVs in a month? And the prize, like the ultimate get for like a Best Buy TV salesman is to achieve the Abessadarian. And that's when you sell three 52-inch Samsung plasma LCD LED HD TV piece in one single day, dude. If you can get three of them out the door, you've won the Abessadarian, much like, you know, you can ro- win a royal crown if you win like the Kentucky Derby and the, right. the high the par stakes or whatever. It, the three races that make up that the, shit. The apartheid. And, and yeah, this, yeah, if you win the is, apartheid. This is, that, is, that is literally the hat trick of retail. Yeah, right it there. Is. It, it is the ultimate. Yeah. yeah, it's the ultimate prize. Like, you can wear... It's the the long sleeve crown. blue shirt on that day, my <laughs> right. friend, because you've earned those extra sleevage because you've sold three of the highest priced TVs ever. So right, it's like you get the what you get is like a uh, don't you normally get like a pin that looks like a World War Two like uh, <laughs> wings like for pilots that they get. Yeah, it has wings except it has the the Best Buy tag mm-hmm. in the middle, like the logo. Yep, it's worn to like represent your time in the trenches. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, to be honest, like. You know, having sex with my first girl did not compare to my Abessadarian. That's the true day I was a man was when right. I sold three 52-inch Samsung TV, now, TV now, HP your, LEDs. Now, your best... And then all three got returned right after the Super Bowl. <laughs> I was just, what up? God damn it, Bob. <laughs> you were matter. beating that me to the matter. punch. <laughs> yeah, it's still on record, man. Asterisk or not, it's still on record. Right, right. I mean, like, you got the slips. That's what matters. You have <laughs> yeah, the slips. Yeah. You're able to really... move three 52-inch plasma LEDs. LCD, LCD HD TVs. Mm-hmm. That's amazing, is what it is. Now, yeah, thanks, man. I thought now, so. Now, do you think that we're it's tougher to get an Abessadarian now with like the 3D TVs happening and like the smart TVs? It's I feel like everybody has an HD TV now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's harder to sell people on these things now, right? Like, yeah. well, would you say I mean, that you the scale do... of difficulty for this has gone up? Well, you can do like an Acurbidarian now. They have the curb TV. So if you get like three of those nasty, like $18,000 curb TVs out, like you can get that out the door. That's pretty badass. But you know, the Darians, they evolve with the times. Right. So like you have, I, a- I think they're pretty close to extinct because really, which of us doesn't shop at Costco now? <laughs> Hello. I don't have a Costco right near me. So not me. Oh my God. What is it like where you live? <laughs> uh, the land of the lost? Well, what they do <laughs> here in Wisconsin is they replace most Costco's with just bars. We just need more bars. <laughs> oh, I picture bars. like a cold wasteland and just like instead of tumbleweed rolling by, it's just like <laughs> cheese curds, like fried cheese curds is rolling across <laughs> the not, tundra. You're not far And you off. just pick one up and you just eat it and you just you're walk really along You're really not that far way. off. <laughs> cheese curds. <laughs> Cheese curds as far as the eye can see, and then, you know, just places to drink. That's what we do, is just places to drink. Now, I I think it was probably different. I think, you know, if I want to go back, I like to think about the history of technology and how it's changed, and how it's changed us. Oh, this sounds like this is ripe for comedy. (laughs) (laughs) It is. Well, I mean, I think Don't worry, I'll fix it in post. (laughs) Being like a a vahissidarian is when you sell three VHS uh, players, you know, <laughs> dude, that's real tough nowadays. That's, that's tough now. Like that's part of it is that the difficulty now is if if you put like a seventeen year old kid in a Best Buy and yeah. you said sell three VHS players. Uh, or else you're fired. That yeah. motherfucker would be out of a job so fast. Like they may as well just quit. You know, it's but impossible there's, now. There's added like, um, there's added like difficulty from the fact that you're selling in store, right? Like people are coming in store, they're like, right, not looking to buy a TV. You got to sell them a TV. Like anybody can go be a Game Boy Adarian and go on a Craigslist and just be like, I'm selling three Game Boys, and like there it's, it is. It's you easy, know? right? Exactly. Yeah. So like having it in the brick and mortar. You know, it's a much crucial element to the whole feeling of success and reward and, and achieving something. Really, you know. Now, now we're, we're mostly we're mostly sticking to technology, but I, I really do think that this is something that could probably apply to other fields of like sales and and stuff like that. Oh right? yeah, dude, Where you do three heart surgeries in a day. That's like a heart <laughs> surgeon. Like, of I mean, course, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there are some other ones. I can't think of anything off the top. I mean, there's 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 other. I don't know. Let's move on. Bob, what do you think uh, abecedarian means? Okay, an abecedarian is one of two things. It's either A, someone who knows their ABCs backwards and forwards and has no problem with those, or B, abecedarian, gritty, 
urban, <laughs> dangerous. It's like a fucking this- slideshow. <laughs> it's like a PowerPoint at a marketing can, firm. Can we get like, the PowerPoint I can tell. <laughs> I want the PowerPoint typing sound I'll effect. I'll buy the timeshare, man. You sold me already. <laughs> uh. This one time, back when I was being a, a private dick, you know, <laughs> a bloodhound, Sherlock, bird dog, you know, private investigator. I was sitting behind my desk, and this dame walks in. She had the look of someone whose gams went all the way up to her hip. She was a biped, all right. She asked me if I was the dick in these parts, and I said, Not yet, but have a seat, and I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I have a problem, she said. In my head, I was hoping this would be a briefcase. I had a pending investigation about the post office fire that I had to look into. <laughs> I'm sure it was about blackmail. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second, but I got that. I got that. Oh my that. god! If, if you thought you were gonna sneak that one past oh, me, I know you sneak one stuff. past on a regular basis. God damn it! That's really. Great. I haven't seen my brother in a week. She continued, and I think he's fallen in with the wrong crowd. He seemed really nervous at dinner last week at the Beef Eaters Grill. Great, I thought to myself. This is my least favorite place in the city to stake out. <laughs> I'll look into your brother's disappearance But is he into anything else? I asked expectantly Magic, she said flatly And my little pony And that's where my case took a right turn Right into an abecedarian I, I, My favorite part when you do this Is that you You spin this whole yarn And then you, you drop the word on us at the end and then you, the, it, it still doesn't fucking tell us what you it's mean. Just a mind yeah, it's like watching like, Bob get on. It's a, like watching Bob get on a bike and ride circles around a cul-de-sac. Like that's exactly, that's exactly what exactly just happened. <laughs> but it's awesome. I, I think it's good for the show, and it's certainly my mom's favorite segment. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, my, I like that because it's, she likes that more than when you're talking. Yeah, well, she likes the clean humor, you know? She does. She's got a foul mouth son. She she wants more of a Bob Ball type son, you know? Right. He's the son I never had. <laughs> really? Don't worry. You don't want me. I never call home. Uh, I just want to know what Mike thinks my mom is like some kind of Jewish monster <laughs> living in a castle. <laughs> just hey, like comes out at night. Where are you going to find a girl? <laughs> where are you going to find a girl? <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> okay, a Bessadarian. I bet you were wondering, hey, what's Mike going to say? And I'm like, nope. I <laughs> you got took nothing. all that time to delay to think <laughs> of something. And you didn't and, think but, anything. but the problem, though, is that I can't focus. Like, I need to, like, turn off my headphones in order to do this show because I'm too busy just getting wrapped up in everything Bob has to say. And and I get, I just get, like, I try to think oh, about all the too. stuff going on with, yeah, <laughs> whatever. And, like, all the stuff that Dave has, like, I can't. I can't focus, and that's my problem. Now, a Bessadarian, I think that if you are a hardcore vegetarian, you would only eat asbestos. <laughs> I fucking don't know. I keep. I going thought you were going to go with like vegetarian alphabet soup. Yeah, that. Uh, but that's dumb. That's not going to make anyone laugh. Yeah, what I mean, is it? Just like all a bunch of cues for quinoa? Like, that's it? It's just nothing but cues? See, yeah, I mean, you even did that better than I could. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I wouldn't even know. I, the thing is, is, like, you know, my typical way of doing this is I try and chop up these words to, like, especially these longer ones. I chop them up to try and make more sense uh-huh. out of it. You yeah. know, you have the Darian and, like, the Aryan part at the end, which is obviously uh-huh. Nazi-related. And yeah. then you have uh, like the Abessa stuff, I, all I think is asbestos, and the problem is, is that my brain gets hung up on on one thing, and I just can't let go of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's probably the best I can do. I'm still <laughs> Here, let me let me help you out. Uh, if you break this down, yeah. the first part is A B E. A. So you got Abe Lincoln right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The next little chunk is C E D A R, which is cedar, mm-hmm. a very lovely smelling wood. Oh. And then Ian. 
is someone who is. So this is someone who dresses up like Abe Lincoln and loves to smell cedar. No, or it no. could be like the wooden box that Abe Lincoln's head is kept in and preserved. <laughs> wow, no, you both, you both it's are made wrong. of cedar. I, I'm so happy. Thank you, Bob. You can cut everything else out that I said. Uh, <laughs> cut out all those parts where I was an embarrassing so, wreck. So please. cut everything out <laughs> up until this point, and then now let me say, okay, so a Bessadarian. When I look at this word, it starts out with A B E. So Abe Lincoln. And then after that is mm-hmm. C-E-D-A-R. So cedar, like the tree. <laughs> and then you have Ian, you know. So it is someone <laughs> who is on the hunt for Abe Lincoln's wooden teeth. Uh, That's what okay. it is. Okay. And I know what you're thinking. I don't think Abe Lincoln had wooden teeth. To which I said, the history books are lying to you. This Dude, is, I mean, this can is, you even prove that he had teeth, period? Like, no, I can't nobody prove can that. prove it. Nobody can prove it. And that's the thing is that... It, this is this is almost as sought after as the Holy Grail. People mm. are on the hunt for Abe Lincoln's wooden teeth because what what is it about? Like what is it? What is the first thing you think of when you think of Abe, Link, Abe Lincoln? You think of him getting shot in the head. Okay, so what's the second thing you think of with Abe Lincoln? They call him Nicholas honest- Cage. Huh? <laughs> Nicholas Cage. President. Okay, that was, okay. So let's go back to National the Treasure third, Four: third The thing. Search for Abe Lincoln's Secret Wooden Teeth. Okay, f- <laughs> a fourth thing. That beard. Okay, fifth thing. What's the fifth thing you think? Oh, uh, the, the other beard, Mary Todd. I mean, there's that famous there's that famous painting where he's eating a cheeseburger too. Okay, so I always so, remember that one. So we're on to the seventh thing you think of with like Abe chairs, Lincoln. Chairs, like he's sitting in a chair. There's that one thing where he's in a chair. <sighs> the big chair. The big chair, yeah. He's okay. got the big chair. Big okay, chair. Like so when you go on vacation and you see the big chair and you guys pull over and take a picture in the big chair together. <laughs> yeah, so now, as a family. So, okay, so the eighth <laughs> thing you think of with Abe Lincoln is that people called him Honest Abe. Okay. And the reason that he was so honest is because he could not tell a lie thanks to his magical wooden teeth. Oh, okay. So people are on the hunt for what is basically considered the only known man made relic mm. that forces people to tell the truth that's Abe Lincoln's wooden teeth. That seems more like a gypsy curse than like an actual magical, <laughs> wonderful thing. Like magical makes it sound like it benefits him. Oh, it's great. Like you okay, should sure. put these teeth I, in your mouth. You can never lie. It's like, well, what? You like, can't really say it's a gypsy <laughs> curse because nobody knows where the curse first came from. I'm going to go for a gypsies. Well, George Washington's wooden teeth, right? Yeah. Oh, maybe they were like George Washington's old teeth. Then Abe was like, I want the power of you and me as I'm president. So I'm going to dig up your grave, steal your teeth. And then he got cursed. And then they were cursed due to that. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yes. Uh, clearly, you have read up on, on the Illuminati, which is what this relates to. But mm-hmm. basically, people are looking for this. And primarily, politicians are looking for this and, and people in power because it, it's it's a powerful tool. You could force anyone to tell the truth. And if you did that with, like, terrorists and stuff like that, just imagine what that would accomplish for good or for worse in the world. So yeah. everyone, so someone that is on the hunt for Abe Lincoln's slash George Washington's uh, truth-telling uh, wooden teeth is an abecedarian by, by trade. A terrorist. Sure. They, well, but we, we, we don't know whether or they're in it for, for better or worse. Yeah. Maybe, th- maybe they're Nick Cage uh, in National Treasure National 4. National Treasure 4. Yeah. Hello. Of course, the uh, abecedarian. They could be that Shia LaBeouf kid. He dug all those holes. I think he was looking for those teeth. <laughs> that, and now he's actually, in rehab. That's actually what the movie's about in holes. Yeah. Shia LaBeouf is digging, but he doesn't realize that they're having the kids dig to look for Abe Lincoln's wooden teeth. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So anyways, Eric, what does a Besidarian mean? Well, Bob Ball was kind of on the right track with uh, definition A. Arranged alphabetically is one of definitions. The other one is a noun and is a person who is just learning or a novice, a besedarian. So, Dave, run. Ha, someone has I'm to trying say to it. cover my mic so it does, it's not loud, but. <laughs> well, stop covering Mike. He can't breathe. <laughs> uh, I can't breathe. Okay. So, so I, what's the first definition again exactly? Like, you, it had something to said, do with. Like, you said arranged alphabetically? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Right, so, so, for example, in abecedarian sequence is something that is arranged alphabetically. Oh, Ooh. okay. So, like when you say, uh, well, shit, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> alphabet. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying thinking, to think of like any words. A, I, just, a, a I sentence, can't. Right? You know, yeah. like, I, like, I pee quickly. That is, that is a sentence that is also arranged mm-hmm. abecedarianly. Yeah. Or like dip, 
Like D-I-P. That's the Besedarian word. Yeah. Dip. Like when yep. I dip, you dip, we dip. <laughs> Besedarian style. <laughs> so, so, but the other one that we're kind of sticking with, though, is the novice thing, right? Like someone that's just learning. Right. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I, I, you know, I like the word uh, overall. It, it is kind of an odd definition, though, isn't it? Like, yeah. You would think that you wouldn't assign something that sounds so complicated to someone that's just learning you know what i mean <laughs> like not nov- like the word novice yeah, or like, amateur what do I call myself again you're an abecedarian yeah, like novice amateur <laughs> intern like those noob. things all work really yeah. well yeah noob <laughs> like we have modernized words that definitely work better but still i mean i'm not trying to cast you know you know you're the guest you're gonna win anyways but you know <laughs> but no i like that uh let's move on let's get another word i think we should get one from bob Bob, what's your word this week? Welcome, friends, to the winning word of the week. And the winning word this week is fallacious. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I've used this word many times. Many times. So uh, Uh, that's what you call uh, uh, chicken head. (laughs) (laughs) You know, one of those old uh, birds you find around in the hood. You just grab it, take it home, and and stuff it. <laughs> you, you know, Dave, some of what you're saying there sounds kind of dirty. <laughs> how do we spell this word? Uh, Bob, how's it spelled? Fallacious is F-A-L-L-A-C-I-O-U-S. Hmm. Fallacious. Oh, God, this word. Uh, I'll, I'll fall on the sword. I will go first. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, when something is a fallacy, that means it's like it's false, you know? Yeah. Yep. Incorrect. Uh, so, I mean, you know, going really basic here, being fallacious means that you are stuck wearing Ben Franklin's wooden teeth that forces him to tell lies. Did all the, like, forefathers just share a pair of wooden teeth? It's like, <laughs> no. hey, who's he? That's going to eat dinner tonight. Oh, it's the, Frank down there. Give him the, the teeth. Reason, Fuck. The, false the reason, teeth. <laughs> the reason why, and I, I feel like I need to educate the audience, Ben Franklin was not, in fact, a U.S. president. <laughs> no, it's a forefather, <laughs> Contrary dude. to popular belief. I mean, like, the fathers who came for, like, Making the America stuff. Forefathers, no, Dave, you know? Why do you think Ben Franklin wasn't a president? Because that motherfucker could not tell the truth. He's talking about how he flew a fucking kite and got electricity <laughs> and all that bullshit. That motherfucker was a liar. He was a liar then. He's a liar today in his grave. R.I.P. Mm. Benny F. But I mean, the thing but is, we respect is, him so much. Every time I go to the place where the women dance for me, I make it rain. He's on every bill, <laughs> Plus, every one of them. Don't take him away from fat people, dude. We don't have I a think, lot. I think Lincoln's on the bill you're talking about. Ben Franklin's one of our more accomplished fatties. Okay, like I mean, without him, who else we sure. got? We got John Candy. We got <laughs> fucking Chris Farley. Like, come on, man, Winston Churchill. And like, we, we lost them too. I mean, yeah, it's 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 very sad. And now, anyways, the thing is, is that Ben Franklin could not tell the truth because he had a different pair of wooden teeth uh and and that one forced him to tell lies little does everybody know this is actually the premise for liar liar starring jim carrey (laughs) so (laughs) okay so so being fallacious is someone that is stuck with ben franklin's non-truth telling wooden teeth Hmm. So, I mean, like, I, I'm I'm appreciating the fact that we have words that are tying into each other already with abecedarian and fallacious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so now a fallacionarian is someone <laughs> that is on the hunt for those teeth as well, because once again, that could be powerful as well. But they're not as popular because I think it is generally perceived to be more... Uh, attractive to try and force people to tell the truth as opposed to telling a lie. Hmm. You know, as we've seen in the other, the other uh, fantastic Jim Carrey flick, Bruce Almighty, he, mm-hmm. he, yeah, was he couldn't able, tell a lie in that. Yeah. No, well, well, but he was able to force uh, Steve Carell's character to talk gibberish on live TV. And, and and that was, in a sense, what, what people didn't see is that he was using the power. He was harvesting the power of Ben Franklin's Oh, my God. Teeth. Are you going to go through the whole entire plot of Bruce Almighty? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I am planning on going through the entire uh, the entire uh, film history of Jim Carrey. So. Oh, okay. I'm cool so, with that. Thanks, IMDb. Wake so me now, up when we get to Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber. So now, 
Now the thing is, is that the, that both of these wooden teeth were actually used in the mask. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it ended up in that That's, green mask. Exactly. Yeah. Shine okay. them up real nice for that green face. Mm. Uh, so anyways, that's my guess for what fallacious means. Um, hmm, Dave, what do you think it means? What do you think fallacious means? Um, well, you know, that's the thing that's weird is I thought you guys were all like really savvy kind of, um, you know, up on pop culture type of dudes, like real, uh, real Renaissance men. But clearly you've not heard of fallacious, who is a actual, uh, really famous RuPaul type drag queen, like up on the same type of status there. Uh, she goes around the country. She does shows, but her whole thing is like, she doesn't sing. She doesn't dance. She doesn't do any kind of spectacle. She's just one by one. Every single person in the audience, she just trust falls into them. And that's, that's like her whole thing. Is she's, she's fallacious. She's like, oh, you know, honey, when was the last time you've had a trust fall? It's like, oh, it's been too long. Fallacious. And then she just falls backwards into him. Um, she has real bad collarbone, like real bad shoulders. But because, uh, you know, when you do it like 30,000 people in a stadium, like that shit's going to hurt. But, but you're uh, going you're gonna to hit the ground every once in a while. Right? <laughs> yeah, every once in a while. Like every third, I would say. Does something third happen to the person. people that drop fallacious? Well, you know, they, they, they've like... Their life has meaning, and uh, uh, the people who drop fallacious. Oh, well, yeah, their life has meaning. <laughs> they they they're like, oh wow, I don't need to like catch a celebrity to validate my life, and that's empowering for them. So they just turn around and they quietly walk out of the venue, and then they yeah, get but their don't car they, and, yeah, but don't they get beat up outside the venue by all the people that are fallacious? Oh no, believers? no, no, man. Everybody, I mean, it's it's a very trusting place. It's like, hey, you know, you don't want to like catch somebody who's trust falling into you. Like that's your right. That's you know, we live in America. We won the war for that reason. So, mm. uh, I'm picture. So I am definitely picturing RuPaul for this, mm-hmm. but I'm also picturing as the trust fall happens, they like the fallacious uh, spreads their uh, spreads their arms out like in a really fast manner, and as they're falling, and then like gold and kind of like glitter and like you know like little star shapes and stuff fly mm-hmm. out. That's kind of how I'm picturing it. Like, I imagine that if you're just going to trust fall, you have to have some production to it, right? Well, I mean, the first row are getting that. But after that, she kind of runs out. It's like where you can't store that much glitter on your person. You know what I mean? I mean, we're talking like thousands of people here. And it's just, you know, 16 hours of just one by one. Trust fall. Trust fall. (laughs) Hey, hey, can you take a second? They don't even play music during it. It's just dead silent. (laughs) Trust fall. Trust fall. I feel like we can. We take a minute and just think about what uh, RuPaul's wig and dress would look like on Ben Franklin. Oh man, that would be some hot bifocal motherfucker. (laughs) I'm thinking that this this production could be better. I mean, there's no doubt we could just pipe in just a thick beat that maybe plays for the full three and a half hours. Well, why don't you write an email? (laughs) Try and be uh, Fallacious's manager. Yeah, Fallacious at Fallacious.net. I think is it. I think I it's a hotmail address, but yeah. <laughs> <It probably is. laughs> um, I, I, uh, I mean, I just want to think that there's something they can do to make the trust falls more special because that's that's one of the things is that everybody kind of like ah f- trust fall yay you know it's goddamn work exercise to you know break the ice or to you know just team building and stuff like mm-hmm. the trust falls themselves like maybe you need like a little bit of a fake out like a rope-a-dope style kind of mm-hmm. trust fall or you need one that it's like you know uh, like maybe you're, you're standing in a circle and no one knows which direction you're gonna fall you know maybe you need an element of suspense a little bit yeah. in there you know or I mean, you just like target the people who are on their iphone and just like fall into them and knock their right. phone on the ground be like pay attention to my trust fall concert or but it's not really can... a concert it's more of a like performance art display slash humanity bonding exercise right maybe you can pull a maybe you can pull a, uh, a raiden from mortal Kombat and just trust <laughs> fall into someone and as you're about to hit their arms you teleport to like the person five feet like five people away from them yeah and yeah. then fall into their arms you know? i like that i can get down with that i mean i just think that there needs to be more to fallacious's trust falling yep. to make it more entertaining and make it more special for each person you know because that that church is gonna lose people fast, you know. The Church of Fallacious. Yeah, the Church of RuPaul and Fallacious. Uh, right. Eric, what do you think Fallacious means? I'm pretty sure that um, Fallacious dates back to like 
13th or 14th century Scotland. Okay. And this, um, you have my interest. This is a word used by people walking down the streets of 13th, 14th century Scotland um, because they're being cautious because there's always human feces falling out the windows. <laughs> like they're just throwing <laughs> oh, buckets of shit out of their windows all the time. It's yeah. just like so, constant. <laughs> I mean, it's just a, a raucous scene in like Edinburgh, 14th century. There's <laughs> slop flying everywhere you know so it's kind of like the act of being cautious when the common folk pour slop out the window okay and you're walking it's like hey you know we got to be fallacious in this town because (laughs) there are a lot of four-story houses just keep your guard up yeah and it's like i mean what at what like how many stories up when you drop poo and it falls to the ground and hits somebody will kill them (laughs) Like I mean, do you think like thirty stories, forty I really stories? Think it depends on the household, you know. Just depends on who's in there. <laughs> Give me the diet. What are they eating? The Give me a second. I need to go email MythBusters. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, there has been reported deaths from people who haven't been very fallacious. Yeah, and, and soon mm-hmm. Grant Imahara is going to be one of them. Uh, I I I like this. I like the idea of, of, of people of, like, why can't we just get back to the days of throwing shit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you go to a different country, you don't know what it's like. I mean, yeah. if you're traveling to East Asia, you never know. Something, Plus, if like you've ever walked falling, down, you got to be cautious. If you've ever walked down a city street, there's always some like Asian dude spraying the sidewalk with a hose. It's like, dude, like you're already set up and waiting. Why can't I just throw my poop out the window? <laughs> He'll just wash it off. <laughs> yeah, like he's waiting to just spray shit off of that sidewalk. Like. Let me oblige him. We, have oh, we really have got to stop talking about poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, so now it's like call the wild for my colon right now. <laughs> so now while we're on the topic, uh, I now the thing is, is if people are talking about it, like I, I, I when you're describing it, Eric, my first thought is golf. You know how you, you a golfer yells four, you know? Exactly. Like, go, ball's coming. I would think that the Scottish would pick a word that is one syllable, maybe two, and not fallacious. Because by the time you get that out, you know, you're wasting time. You're not going to be able to warn someone that shit is about to hit their head, you know? Uh, actually, I mean, have you ever heard Scots talk to Aceus at the end there? That may be multiple syllables to us, but to to them, it's like one long, just, uh, it's like one, yeah, it's like, Flacious. it's all one continuous, like, sound, so Flacious. it's actually just a quick you know, two syllable word for them. So, so now if you're, if you're the one that is throwing poop out the window or just cutting out the middleman and just shitting out the window (laughs) is, do you have the filet shits? Yes. That's actually the origin of the word when the shits come out and then they fall filet shits. There you fallen go. shits but i okay. don't think they warn you and that's why you have to be cautious about yeah. the falling shits well you know your 14th century 15th century scottish person is pretty busy they can't Common be going place, around just know? like telling everybody when they're throwing poop out the window it's like they got things to do they're moving no, around they're, man. they're an angry bunch you would think that maybe maybe they have online leaderboards so that yeah. way they could they could like at least keep like track. a whiteboard you know, in the you want to get more headshots well you dude know? you'd be pissed if like you know friggin mel gibson was your neighbor and they killed his wife like you'd be all <laughs> mad too like I, I understand where that anger comes from but i mean yeah i would think that you would want to keep track of the number of filet shits you've you've landed on people <laughs> <laughs> It's like a giant stone tablet in your house. You're just etching the giant line every time you poop out your window. Just check yeah. marks on the front door. And then you and then you upload it to Apple Game Center, even in the 13th, 14th century. Yeah, It makes course. perfect sense. Uh, Bob, what does fallacious mean? <laughs> Are you fallacious. here? You are, okay, you're still here. I didn't know if you had to run off quick. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to in a moment. Uh, and I'm not even kidding about that. Uh, fallacious... Not unlike my colon means containing a mistake. (laughs) Not true or accurate. So almost like every time when I tell you this is the winning word of the week, that is a fallacious statement. That is a fallacious statement. Not true or accurate. Uh I like the I like the word. I like the meaning. I was close, obviously. It should just be said. So far I'm wordsmith of the week. Um (laughs) good stuff. Great stuff. Uh, let's get the next word. Let's move on. Hey, while we're talking about words, 
Oh, God, I got to go. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I got a poop a dictionary. <laughs> oh, so it's probably more like an Encyclopedia Britannica. Am I right? So, like, I feel like maybe this little interlude, mm-hmm. uh, we can we can stall stall for a while while Bob hits the stall. Uh, <laughs> stall while he hits the stall. I'm <clears throat> sure he's going to cut all of this out. I want to think he's... Yeah, let's take a second to wipe the slate clean. <laughs> um, go ahead and, 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 you know, flush our jokes down the drain. I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. No, no, you're right. Pooping. You're right. I mean, if I... I, I I don't like to run a super tight show. I like mm. to be a little lax, a little lax, <laughs> <laughs> little, little a little loose. lackadaisical. Yeah, loose, I like to just... keep an eye on things. I, I got one brown eye on things. I just got a lot of stuff <laughs> stewing. I'm not really saying much. You know? I just got a lot of things stewing in my in my, my backside, my front side. Just, <laughs> just trying to think. Uh yeah, I mean I I don't I don't want the show to take a shit now because we <laughs> this because show's yeah. going to shit. It yeah. really is. Right uh, now. Well, we better pray to the porcelain I god that we can back. finish the show. <laughs> uh I mean, who knows how long this will take. My guess is if we had to if we had to put a time on it, I'm going to say 10 minutes. Uh, well, is it number one or number two? Oh, this is Defo number two. <laughs> well, he's doing number one, but out of his butt. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, basically. Uh, I feel bad for Bob. It sucks that he's not feeling well. But, you know, this, this is... I'm happy that he's still pushing through. <laughs> pushing yeah, through. I mean, I'm happy for him that he can still poop, and he's not unable to poop this comedy right. is just peeking through you know it's- yeah i can tell i could tell during the episode that he was straining you know yeah, he was, he was <laughs> probably touching cloth at that point <laughs> he was he was he was prairie dog straight through his jokes. yeah yeah uh, he's gonna have to flush out all this bullshit and post he will mm-hmm. exactly um yeah well i guess we just hang out i guess that's cool. what we do and then bob will just cut it i hope cool. he kept his track going and if we need to you know save and and re- redo. Oh it yeah, Bob's a professional. Ooh. Yeah, he, he wouldn't is. fudge something like that up. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, welcome back. Oh my god. I don't know why have... you just don't record in your bathroom, sitting on your toilet. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what that I would... do. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so much easier. <laughs> uh, Bob, <laughs> I will take my meal in the bathroom. Bob, we didn't man. stop our tracks. <laughs> That's fine, right? Oh, I thought you were just going to keep going. <laughs> no, nope, no. I would rather. Oh no. no, no! We just made fun of you a bunch. Nope. I would rather. It's okay. We we didn't lose like any time. Really, it's fine. Oof. Oh man, that was god awful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Smells like an Arby's in your house right now. I bet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Like a putrefied Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So after that commercial break, we're back. Uh, remember, everybody, we're sponsored by Prairie Dog 540. Enjoy that. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That's clearly what's ailing Bob right now. Uh, we, we've got to get, we got two more words to get through. It's between Dave and I. Dave, do you feel like you've got a really good word this week? Oh, I've got a pretty good word. I'd like for you to go next. I'll take the last right. word. Dave, what's your word this week? All right, I'm pretty proud of this one. Uh, my word this week is snollygoster. <laughs> <laughs> snollygoster. Uh, In that old snollygoster. Uh, Eric, I'd like for you to take a crack at spelling snollygoster. Snollygoster's S N O L L Y G A S T E R. Oh, close. Uh, no A and O. Snollygoster is G O S T R. Yeah, Snolly Goster. Can you spell it one more time for me, Dave? Because I have to uh, write these S down. S as in Samuel, N as in Nancy, O as in Omar, L as in Larry, L as in Larry, Y as in Yemen, G as in Gary, O as in uh, Omar, S as in Samuel, <laughs> T as in Tyler, E as in Edward, and R as in Rachel. Oh, I thought it was going to be R as in, oh, right, man. <laughs> R as in, <laughs> Deborah, 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 get my brother out of here. Uh, Deborah, I don't want to go to my mom's. My brother wants to have sex with you. <laughs> That's that whole show, by the way, is the brother trying to nail the wife. I, I fucking, I mean, it. yeah. Okay, Snollygoster. Bob, welcome back. What do you think Snollygoster means? Snollygoster. Now, you would think that this would have something to do with Canadian geese or some such thing. It but you'd be wrong. Oh. 
because Snollygoster is the original name for the shelter that raccoons in the wild make out of human garbage. Oh, okay. Uh, they can make a Snollygoster out of like old potato chip bags, yeah. two by four, yeah. shattered iPhones, or your old receipts from your Amazon Prime purchases. Of course, a Snollygoster will not be traditionally shaped. <laughs> Who uh, the hell gets for- receipts when purchasing <laughs> things on Amazon? <laughs> it, has, it, it sounds to me like Bob requests the receipts. <laughs> like, I'm going to need a copy of this. And then he throws it out. <laughs> it's like he prints a receipt after he buys something Runs and then books. puts it in the trash outside the and then the raccoons yeah. take it. <laughs> or you know what? He probably has raccoons that does his accounting for him. <laughs> I like that. I'm, I'm sorry, you don't have raccoon accountants? <laughs> I don't. Do I need raccountants? I I make big effing dollars. I have raccoon accountants. Yeah, he's a professional voice actor, dude. Like we're not in his league at all. I, I do picture a raccoon now sitting in front of a massive calculator <laughs> with like one of those visors on. The green just visor. running just running the numbers. He's got his sleeves rolled up. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got I hermit was- crab uh, accountants. They're the, they're the cheapest the cheap accountants, but the good thing is when one of them makes a mistake, you can just throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> throw them right yeah, in the pot. Throw them right down into the toilet. Uh, so so Bob, a snollygoster is sort of a home or like a a house or whatever like that that is made by raccoons using uh, human waste essentially, right? Like just trash and stuff, right? Yeah, trash house, and and it won't it won't be uh, shaped like a traditional house because raccoons only build dwellings in the shapes of other famous rabid raccoons f- from throughout history. Oh, cool. Okay, and as we all know, every rabid raccoon is shaped like the letter Q. Mm. So like uh, Nico from po- Pocahontas or something. I think it's some fucking I don't remember the name. I can't think of any other raccoon. So rocket raccoon. Okay. Well, you already got one of them. Coming to theaters this August. Uh, I, n- you know, I love, like, I, I love little creatures. If I could, I would have an exotic pet. I, I mean, I love, a- like, like I, a like- raccoon? Yeah, no, seriously, <laughs> I would love to have a raccoon friend. I, I've, I've, I'll always love raccoons. No, you wouldn't. They're going to steal everything you have. But I fucking love... I think they're mischievous. Every one of them has tiny little creepy human hands and wears a mask. <laughs> it's my favorite, though, <laughs> because they're just little fucking bandits. They're little mischievous assholes that you know deep down love you, but they don't always show it. It's a lot like a lot of... It's like a lot of my friends. And They take I mean, all your food. They sleep and they're at also, your house. They're also raccoons. <laughs> like, those are my friends. But I mean, I would love to have a raccoon friend and we actually have raccoons near us that if people put out their trash at night instead of in the morning the the raccoons fucking tear through that stuff so sometimes i walk outside and i see garbage bags that have been torn into and shit's just strewn about and and now i'm gonna start thinking well i wonder what they found to build their house you know, mm. like maybe there was like a, a, a one of those cardboard cup holders you get at like a McDonald's or something, you know, like maybe they found that and they're like, oh, shit, this is going to be helpful. Like we can put this on our roof or something, you know? Yeah. I mean, that that part of it, you know, everybody normally curses a raccoon for that sort of thing. Like, ah, these motherfuckers. But now I feel good about it, you know? Like, maybe I'm going to start putting my garbage out earlier. Maybe I'm going to put like, you know, just a little plywood or something to help mm. them out. No, I like it. I mean, you know, it's it's like, who cares when the wife tells me to take out the trash? It's like, oh, no, I got to do it for the raccoons. You're just throwing Absolutely. away all kinds of stuff just for the raccoons. Yeah, you're like yeah. not finishing your Big Mac because you're like, oh, shit, the raccoons. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, you make sure you put your undergarments on the top of the trash so they can make curtains. You're not, you're, little, uh, you're not even taking. Guster. You're not even taking a bite into your roast beef sandwich from Arby's. It's for the raccoons. Yeah. Like you're not even, oh, for the love of God, don't do that. <laughs> Those are not edible. No. Uh, so that okay, that I really like. I really like that as a snollygoster. Uh, this is such a cool, wordsmith of the week. No, I already won that. Uh, this is it's such a cool word. Uh, but I'm not sure where else we can go with it. Eric, what do you think snollygoster means? Uh, I think it's um, it's I think it's a word for somebody who makes fun of people for being left-handed. <laughs> One of those uh, right-wing so, guys. <laughs> he's a right-wing. Like a it's a word for everyone who's right-handed. Yeah, just a very traditionalist person who 
you know, when you see someone writing the left handed and they they're smearing their pencils all over the page <laughs> and they're just calling you out <laughs> and you can't help it because that's the way you were raised. That's the way you were born. Yeah, right. they're snobby. Well, you know, left hand, you're born that way. It's not a choice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and the the real bad ones, I'm sure, probably take it to extremes where it's like, you know, the I picture like, you know, teachers from like 60 years ago, you know, oh. like because they were the ones that were probably like, you know, the 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 private school, like nun teachers, you know, they were the ones that were slapping your wrist and saying, no, you have to write right handed. And they would be they would go to extremes like they would start handing kids right handed only pencils, you know? Yeah. And it's like. They'd what are you, what are you supposed to do with this? You back. have to write with your right hand, yeah. Fucking like Ticonderoga, but only right-handed. <laughs> yeah, you know, left-handed golf clubs are just basically out of business, right? The left-handed golf club manufacturers, they mm-hmm, don't have right. any business anymore. Yep. So that's the uh, left foot to stand on. <laughs> I mean, you think about Ned Flanders, his store went yeah. out of business because you know, the other guys are in there bugging him. But how much of like... The, our overall impression, you know, not just as a nation, but throughout the world, our, our disdain and distaste for left-handed people. How much of that comes from just Ned Flanders being Ned Flanders? <laughs> Stupid Flanders. I mean, I gotta Flanders. say, like, in the 80s, in the 80s, like, lefties were up and coming, dude. Like, they were about ready to take over the world. They were. You know, the the world was their oyster in their left hand. and people like People wanted just, to be left-handed. Yeah, dude. I wanted to be left-handed when I was a kid. Absolutely. It was, like, the cool thing to do. Many tried, few could. You know, <laughs> uh, you could have just cut off your right hand like the rest of us, Dave. <laughs> uh, I wasn't yeah, diehard. You know I, I was a poser. Then you replace Bob. it with a hook, and you're just going to use the hook all the time because that's just cool. Uh, but no, see, it's hard to wipe. Then you turn into a pirate. Yar, of course you do. I'm not lying about this at all. Like normally, like I'm even going to take out my Ben Franklin wooden teeth. Like this is straight truth. Every time I, I find out that someone I know is left-handed, like, I've had that with people where, like, just, just the other day, in fact, we were, we were, like, you know, out grilling and stuff and doing, like, a little beanbag toss stuff, and mm. they were like, oh, I'm going to move to the other side because I'm left-handed. I always have this, this fleeting moment of, like, awe and, like, not shock. It's not the right word because that sounds too extreme. Snollygoster. It's a snollygoster. I think maybe maybe I have a little bit of that in me where I'm where I'm feeling like holy crap, you're left-handed? Like that's weird. How do you live, you know? How do you how do you wipe? Like what do you do? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's tough. I don't know. I, I, I actually do go through that every once in a while where I listen, I, they're just like the rest of us. They go over to somebody else's house, they pick up their cat, they wipe their butt, and they flush the cat. You know, Bob, I think that might be the, the root of your problems right now. Like <laughs> you gotta use the right side of that cat, because one of those sides is not friendly. See, and see, and again, here we go with picking sides. That is the root of being a snollygoster, as Eric's You want to use the right side of that cat. The left yeah. side is no well, good. I'm a dog guy. I always go dog. I think puppies put up less of a fight, and they kind of dig it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> is there now, Dave? You're an expert on this. What breed, like, what type of dog is the best one to wipe your ass with? Well, I mean, you know, poodles are good because you know, like, they're not going to shed while you're, <clears throat> you know, Very while you're doing your business. The, you know. Yeah. Like, if- I got this. You totally want to go Sharpe. <laughs> Sharpe. Ooh. <laughs> so, something, something super wrinkly. Yeah. You got like a lot that. of uh, surface area to, to use. Um, yeah, and, it, and it's ribbed for your pleasure. So Compact, you know. easy to hold, easy to handle. I, I like I like the Sharpe one because you can hide the poop then in, in the fold. <laughs> in the you, know, it's a lot. you just push it down in. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot like going to a friend's house and pooping on their floor and then yeah. talking it quietly <laughs> underneath <laughs> one of their... <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I've done that at many a dinner party. Many a dinner party. <laughs> yes. You are never invited to my house. I couldn't get through that by putting the poop under the mats. What? Do that. I'm going to do that tomorrow to someone. Oh, my God. I don't know why. I just found that that image so funny. Almost as funny as thinking about Dave wiping his ass with a dog. I should say. Hey, come come over. You don't have to think about it. Anyways. Constantly dog sitting. I have to. I have to give my. Did you say dog sitting? Yeah, that was that was a little double whammy there. That was good. And I'm glad it only you caught Bob. That's good. Uh, uh, Snollygoster. I have to give my guess. You know, it's going to be a good one. Here's the thing. 
we are killing trees. Mm-hmm. It's a problem, okay? It's America. Gotta save the trees. No, no, Bob, that's the problem. Is that excuse is wearing thin? I don't care that it's America. Trees are running out. We need trees. And you know, the biggest issue, the, the reason why we're killing trees is because we produce so many facial tissues, so many Kleenexes, you know? What? So many Amazon Prime purchases. So many <laughs> Amazon Prime purchases. But the thing is, though, is, is we need to use modern technology to replace a lot of our wasteful products. That's the best thing that we can do with technology, aside from, like, curing cancer. You know, mm-hmm. like replacing yeah. wasteful products is, is a big part of going green, of, of helping the environment. What is one of the things that we can do? Well, ladies and germs, the Snollygoster. The Snollygoster is a small personal vacuum cleaner that sucks gunk and sucks snot out of your nose. And it oh, works okay, so okay. well. So what it is, is think of it as like a little mask that you put over your schnapps. Okay. You mm-hmm. flip it on, and then it sucks the snot out. It clears yeah. your sinuses, probably hurts your brain a little bit. You don't want to turn it on too high, but it's perfect for when you're sick, for when you're congested. Use it before going to bed. I know a lot mm. of people are like, I use a neti pot. That's disgusting. Why yeah. not use a snollygoster, which is just a, a big fucking suction that just pulls the stuff out of your nose you flip it on for a few seconds you turn it off it's done you feel so clean and 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 just you feel like all that gunk is gone then you just rinse it out down the drain and that's it that's a quick question can you use a snolly goster if you have food poisoning uh if you put it if you suck the gunk if you have two butts bob if you have two butts you're good um i was actually going to ask like if it would help Say I'm on Mars, right? And okay. say I have a tracking device kind of up in my skull, and I accidentally <laughs> drop my silver briefcase, <laughs> and I don't know how to get the tracker out of my nose because I don't want, like, Michael Ironside to shoot me in the back. <laughs> Will this device help suck out that, like, receiver? Or, I mean, how does that work? <laughs> well, you're going to have to get the Snollygoster Pro. Yes, yeah. so you're gonna. there's an extension for that, first off. So okay. you need to get that. Uh, it's a small little prod that that's thin and very very narrow that goes mm-hmm. deep up into the recesses of your skull to get that. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, like Bob was saying, you need to get the pro model, which has a stronger pull. And then, because you to suction something like that out, it's got to be like you know unhealthily strong. If you just use that generally on your nose, it would actually pull uh, parts of like your your nose nasal cavities in the back down, mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. could actually damage your your nasal cavity. So you don't want to do that in general. That's why the pro actually comes with that that extension. Uh, and you're default. also going to need larger nostrils. Well, but you can get because a no- that's going to blow those right well, out. Well, but the Snollygoster, you can actually get nostril wideners. So what it yeah. is, is you, there's a Definitely. strip that goes over the top, similar to the stuff like the sleep aid stuff that you wear to go to bed. But then it also has these plugs that actually, like a vice grip, you 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 twist it a little bit, and it just pulls your fucking nostrils apart. So mm-hmm. there are some options there. Uh, okay. The best part of your description is I could hear you actually moving around your nose <laughs> while you were doing it. You're like, okay, yeah. th- this is a visual. On an audio podcast, right there. You just put that right up in there. I give, Bob, I give people... And then you put that Snollygoster right in there, and then you just... It's my job to give people a visual, okay? Uh, and it's not a visual necessarily about about me having to shit really bad or wiping my ass with a dog. But I, I'm giving people a visual that stands for for hope, that stands for uh, a healthy environment in the future. Because once again, by by bringing about a Snollygoster, what does it do? What does it eliminate? We don't need puffs. We don't need Kleenex anymore, you know? I mean, we get this. We're saving so many trees, and that's so good for the environment. It's, it's one step. And then that's just it. Like you were kind of saying before, can you use it on your butt? Can you use it on other things? Maybe. Maybe, maybe you can. And that's the future. This is the first use, you know? So that's uh, that's a Snollygoster, as I okay. see. Okay. All right. Dave, what, do you, what is the actual definition of it? <clears throat> well, a Snollygoster is an unprincipled but shrewd person, someone who can't be trusted. Ooh. Yeah, that- Wait a second. We already had a show about me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing that I thought was really funny about this word. It's like, Snollygoster sounds like you would hear it in a Harry Potter movie. 
Like, oh, there's that Snollygoster <laughs> flying up there with the hippo griffin. Like, you know, this just sounds like ridiculous. It sounds like upbeat childish, but for it to be for like a really untrustworthy, shrewd type of person, like Snollygoster, I don't know. It just doesn't fit, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but there you have it. Snollygoster. And, you know, and, you know, as you say that, no, Bob, I don't think of you as much. I can rely on you. You know who I can't rely on? That motherfucker, Ryan Lewis. He is a oh, snobby no. We should really blame Macklemore. I was going to say God, because he never smites the people I ask him to, but... <laughs> well, but you're sure. doing it all wrong. That's why. Uh, let's get to the last word this week. That's mine. My word this week is Banjax. <laughs> Banjax! <laughs> all right, dude. I like it. I Banjax. like it. Banjax. Banjax. Who, uh, anybody want to take a crack at spelling this quick? Um... Banjax, B A N J A X. That is correct. That is a thousand Banjax. percent correct. You get four hundred and fifty points. <laughs> Thank for you a very, very much. Quick, very accurate spelling. Mm. Uh, Bob, I'd like to go to you. Actually, you know what, Eric? Let's get you. A, let's get you to get a first crack at All a definition. Right. You're new. Oof. Let's do it. Banjax. What do you think it means? I think Banjax is similar to Ajax in the sense it's a cleaning agent, some kind of thing that you use to clean your house. Uh, but really, in reality, what you're doing is cleaning Jax from your Mortal Kombat game. The guy with steel <laughs> arm. So you're getting rid of Jax. Because honestly, let's talk about it. Nobody uses Jax in Mortal Kombat. Like, that is correct. One yeah. of the worst characters in any fighting game. So ban Jax is the act of getting rid of Jax in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> or banning Jax from Mortal Kombat tournaments, maybe? It's like a house rule. Sort of like a... You know, you got beer pong house rules. Yeah, got... or like no odd job and golden eye. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's now Banjax. that could be that could be like ban ban odd. I almost wanted to call it odd jacks, but clearly the jacks part has to do with Mortal Kombat. But like, it can, it can we? I'm all about broadening the use of words. I I like using words out of out of their natural habitat. Can is there a way that we can transfer? Ban Jax as it relates to Jax from Mortal Kombat to <laughs> anything else. I'm challenging you on that. Oh, I don't know, man. I think that, uh, like Dave said, banning Odd Job and Goldeneye is a great one. Yeah, I think hmm. it's just something you shout like when somebody does like you know some shenanigans in a game or something. It's like, oh, you're watching somebody play Mario Three and they like use the warp to get from you know point A to point B. You're just like Ban Jax, like objection, bullshit. That yep. no, no dice, okay. no dice, buddy. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, so I can see how you can you can spread that across a little bit more. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave, what do you think Banjax means? Banjax. Well, um, Banjax is actually a uh, it, it hasn't been invented yet, but it, I've been to the future, so I can tell you. <laughs> In about 300 years, um, the the banjo is going to be plucked all but dry. There's going to be you know a whole wave of banjo based artists. We're all going to, as a human, you know, as humanity, we've we've all had enough with the banjo. So the great banjologists of the day, they're going to go into the back rooms. They're going to figure out what's what's the deal. What are we going to do, right? So they actually had this pro- a similar problem in like the 90s with violins. So violins were just like, oh, they're just kind of peaked, right? So they started making those futuristic ones that were like all neon and hollow, and you can see all kinds of like metal shit in them, and they were electronic. And that's the same thing that they're going to do with banjos a couple hundred years from now. It's going to become the banjax. Uh, uh, the banjax. It's going to be like, you know, how you have like a guitar is like a badass version of a keyboard. Yes. A banjax is going to be, you know, all shiny plastic, um, essentially a banjo, but uh, on the bottom of it is going to be a board where during the show while you're playing you can have two little kids playing jacks on it um so you know they'll throw marbles down on there they'll hop around in circles around the, the banjax player and you know they'll be shredding but you also have this dynamic of like oh i'm not that into the music of, of the band like let me see who's going to win this game of jacks between you know these two little kids so this is such a huge instrument it's like a- oh yeah it weighs like four thousand pounds uh, but in the future we're all stronger because we all drink a lot more milk so Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I am picturing the the marching band version of this <laughs> too, and that seems like like it's almost like a, a motorcade. Like you have to have a bunch of people helping mm-hmm. you with this. Oh uh, yeah, that's cool. I like that. Um, Bob, what do you think Banjax means? Do you think Banjax has something to do with the band Basement Jacks? No. Are they band aids for the Jackson Five? No. Is it cereal for the band members of Jack's White's band? No. Banjax. 
Now, this is truly an adventurous word. Would you believe this one time? I found an actual pharaoh's tomb. Hmm. My sister, the Egyptologist... E- Let me try that sentence. I'll cut it up in post. <laughs> My sister, the Egyptologist and librarian, helped me unlock the secrets of an ancient Egyptian curse, releasing an all-powerful mummy... After some very entertaining hijinks involving some sand in all the wrong places, I got that mummy back into his protective sarcophagus using the Book of the Dead written by famed chef Mario Batali. And that is Banjax. Are you Brendan Fraser? Maybe. I fucking <laughs> I loved you in Monkey Bone, dude. <laughs> just FYI, I just want you to know that. I fucking love that movie. Uh... I feel like you've just been waiting to say the word monkey bone to me for 43 weeks. Oh, no, dude. I I say monkey bone all the time. Like, you're just not around on the one hour every Thursday night when I don't say it. Oh. Uh, uh, So, so Banjax, something about pharaohs and putting it back in its tomb using the Book of the Dead or something, right? Written by fame chef Mario Batali. Mario Batali. Mario Batali would probably... Now, let's be real. It would be a lot harder to get a mummy back in their tomb, uh, or pharaoh, I guess, a mummy or whatever, back in their tomb using a book written by Mario Batali than it would by with a book written by Alton Brown. Am I wrong on that? I would totally get in that sarcophagus for an Alton Brown book. Oh, yeah. Of course you would. Because it's going to be funny, not just like covered in orange well, it's crocs. It's going to be so good. It's just so good. Okay, anyways, uh, Banjax. Let me give you guys the real definition. Uh, Banjax is chiefly an Irish word. So there oh, we go. Oh, another import. I have to import words. That's what I do now. And it is, it is a verb that means to damage or ruin or smash. So to damage something is a is to Banjax it. And uh, my favorite part is according to Sexy Miriam Webster, it's first known use is 1939, but its origin is unknown. No one knows where Banjax came from. It's come to destroy the world. It's come to Banjax it. I like this word. You guys like it. Everybody likes it. Good. Yay. Yeah, it's a it's a, a raucous fun time for all ages. Man, fuck you. Just fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I really Banjax that reply up. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, God damn it. Dave, let's get to a let's get to a scenario. Let's do a scenario this week. Scenario. Um, I think I think two of us are construction workers that are heckling at hot hot uh, ladies or hot dudes walking by, and uh, two of us play the uh, the people in question that are getting heckled, that are getting that are getting called at. Well, I don't want to tell you how to be a host, but you should probably designate rolls for this little exercise. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sorry, I thought everybody was going to start making noises there, but I was the only one that did nope, it. <laughs> nope. Dave, you are, you're one of the passers-by. All right. Uh, Bob and Eric, you are the, the nasty construction workers. I'll also be one of the passers-by. Okay. Let's go. All right, uh, uh, Mike. We should discuss who go- you go first because I want them to see the band. So it'll make no. I want them to see you. You're you're worse looking than me. So I want them to see you ah, first. Thanks, thanks. So asshole. then, yeah, I'm, okay. that's the basis of our friendship is that we're just so hey, honest with each hey, other. Hey yo, uh, hey yo, you looking at my jack ammo? Oh, uh, that's a good <laughs> one, asshole. Look, I've got I've got a meeting to get to. I've got three kids at home, and you guys look. You're getting you're getting your shit all over the sidewalk. What's this all about? What's the deal? Oh, sorry, that's the uh, fallacious from uh, three floors up. Oh, yeah, that's okay. not me. Blame it on the blame it on the people upstairs. You guys are. The hey, ones- look, I wouldn't do that. I use a pug. What? Uh, now I'm kind of intrigued. Uh, what is a pug? What does a pug have to do with this? I mean, I know we're too hot to care or whatever, but like, what's a pug? It's uh, it's one of them uh, small dogs that my neighbor has that I wipe my butt with. Mm. Oh. What's uh, up with uh, what's up with your burly pal there? He's just a silent, yeah, silent guy. Yeah, you just look like you silent look like a dude. big. He's a, he's the strong silent type. Eh? He may also be dead. I'm not sure. <laughs> poke him with the stick. <laughs> Wait a minute. Can you poke him real is, quick? Are we accidentally inside weekend at Bernie's? The construction worker this year. <laughs> I think we are. Look, is he a charismatic corpse? Look, you know what? I, I appreciate about your hey, friend. Hey, listen, my here. friend likes sunglasses, and he likes uh. 
He likes strings tied to his wrist. Like this, look. Look at him. He moves. Hey, look, he's waving at you, ladies. What I appreciate about look, him... Look, he's pointing to his own jackhammer. He's jack not getting this stuff all <laughs> over. Like, you're, you're... Look at... You're getting... Like, I am I am a, a strong uh, businesswoman executive in a pantsuit that mm. has really nice shoes on, and you're getting my shoes dirty. Oh, okay. And, oh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to step on your shoes there, lady. <laughs> oh, see, now look. Now you're fucking moving around, stepping on my... Sh- I got a oh, meeting to get to. Oh, me. Oh, Look, Take I got it easy, all right? <laughs> I'm out here with a jackhammer. You're over here walking in four-inch heels. I don't know what you're doing over here. I got, you got a some meeting kind to... of stems, though. I'll tell you that. Hey, now that's in, that is that is not. Look, I've got three kids at home. Hey. I'm a single mom. Yeah, hey, listen, anything, you will you not disrespect be... my friend John Travolta from Welcome Back, Kata. <laughs> <laughs> If it, uh, yeah, she has three kids. If anything, compliment her incredibly loose vagina. That is easily <laughs> her best feature. Let's I mean, just, let's that be real. thing is like a cave full of bats. You can scream into it, and it'll just echo for days. I got right? an 18-wheeler. Let me back it up. Man, that thing's a real snolly gasta. <laughs> I may be an Apicidarians, but you know what? That thing is wild. Sounds like somebody really banjacks that one. <laughs> L- listen, listen. I do, in fact, have an, like an incredible. It's basically like a, a beanbag chair without the beans, <laughs> and it's like without the, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just hanging there, right for the plucking. Uh, that, that's that sounds like a prolapse. You should see a doctor. Yeah, you know what though, buddy? Like at least this guy here, he's got he's got some charm. He's got some pep. He actually apologized for stepping on my shoes earlier. Thank you for that. Listen, Luckily, doll, I can just dust listen, them off. Listen, doll, just write your phone number down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You left handed? Jesus. Mary what, and you, Joseph. You, you guys have a problem with me being left handed? Is yeah, that, I'm you a know, that's why, my, that's why my second husband left, left me, okay? Like, you know what? Your third and your fourth will, too. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's kind of an asshole, but I'm into it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, well, sweetheart, you know why don't you call me later? You're right-handed, aren't you? <laughs> okay, and then and then and then poop fell down on everybody, and they died. <laughs> Here we go. They made a fallacious end. Fallacious. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, oh! I was like, oh, oh. All right, so that was successful. I think uh, I expect I expect lots of sound effects and uh, and Bob fixing everything in post. By the way, including, I was on mute for like ten minutes. Sorry. Well, that's including like any of our latent misogyny, any of our sort of uh, quiet uh, transphobia, any other issues in there. Bob, you can fix all of that. Thank you. Uh, let's yeah. get. I, I'll fix it in post, gorgeous. Let's get to our uh, let's get to our escalator pitches, uh, Eric. You gave us you gave us a start with Abessadarian. I'd like for you to tell us why we should vote for it this week. Abessadarian is uh, a real word. It's in the dictionary compared to the other two words. Oh, that's good. Of. Thanks. That's uh, helpful. I was looking at other words and I couldn't pick them because they were fake words that the internet made up. So Abessadarian, real word, number one. Number two, it's got like five definitions. Pick them, choose them, whichever one you like. Uh, it could be alphabetical order, could be someone who's just learning something like myself in podcasting. So, a Bessadarian, yeah. Abe Lincoln's got wooden teeth, apparently. And, uh, yeah, I mean, vote for Abe, a Bessadarian. Uh, good. Bob, fallacious. Not true or accurate. Friends, I think that's why you should vote for me because I am not true or accurate. <laughs> Fallacious. Uh, for me, Banjax. This word's so cool. I've already told you guys, damage, ruin, smash. It's Irish. It's uh, origin unknown. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's also a banjo that has kids playing jacks underneath it. <laughs> Pretty great. And also, don't be an idiot and don't use jacks in Mortal Kombat. You're better than that. Banjax. That's Banjax. It's good. It's great. Let's vote for it. Dave, Snollygoster quick. Snollygoster is a pretty great word. It sounds fun. It's upbeat. It makes you think happy thoughts. Um, and But it also reminds you that humanity is not to be trusted. You can't trust anyone, especially the shrewd. Um, but it's also like if you think of it outside the box in its actual definition, it can be like a smelly ghost car, like a car that's being driven by ghosts. But they're like 
really stinky ghost that died in like trash accidents or maybe drowning in a porta potty, like <laughs> those kinds of things. And it's fun, you know, because it's a snotty goster. Um, it almost sounds like a, a like snotty roller coaster, like it's just a a booger coaster riding on you know phlegm and just really like gross, like being on the inside of a salad bar. Um, snotty goster. <laughs> And here I thought being on the inside of a salad bar would be cool, but I guess... No, it's not It's not a good place to be. You want to be on the outside. Uh, let's get to votes. Voting time. Eric, I think as the guest, you should give us, uh, give us a start here. Uh, only because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want the pressure to crumble you to have it come down to you at the end. Thank you. So let's, Thank have, you. You, let's have you start. You have to pick uh, your top two choices between Fallacious, Banjax, and Snollygoster. <coughs> Number one... I'm going to have to go Banjax. Banjax yeah. could have gone so many ways, but you know what? I think there was a uh, real potential there with that word. Number one, Banjax. Number two, fallacious. Ooh. Yeah. Fallacious. Very good. What a nice word. It is a nice word. It really does roll off the tongue. All right. I am up next. I have to pick between Abecedarian, Fallacious, and Snollygoster. My number one. It's got to be Snollygoster. I love nice. this word. It's nice. such a fun fucking word. It really mm-hmm. is. It is such a fun word. I love saying it. I love thinking it. Uh, it. It's. It just. It looks cool. That's the thing. Is some of these words sound cool, but they don't always look cool. Mm-hmm. But once you write it down, I think Snollygoster is an awesome looking word too, and that means a lot when you're when you're reading a book and stuff. Sometimes you come across a word that you're like, God damn, that just looks pleasant on the eyes too, and that you don't always get to say about <laughs> words. Snollygoster is one of them. My number two is it has to be. This was a close number two. It's got to be a Besedarian. Uh, mm. Again, sounds awesome. The uh, A B E C E. That alone, just it, it's awesome. It sounds awesome. I, I, I love saying it. Abecedarian. So I that's bet my you number. Daddy-in. That's my uh, number two. Dave, you have to Yo. pick between Abecedarian, Fallacious, and Banjax. All right, I got to go Banjax of the three. That's uh, that's pretty pretty awesome. <laughs> and um, you know, I want to see who wins. Uh, who wins at Jax? Is it going to be Little Janie or uh, Little Colin? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Banjax definitely number one. And uh, number two, I'm going to have to go fallacious, I guess, um, because uh, at first I was I thought it was the fallacious with the C, um, which is very, <laughs> yeah. very dirty. Uh, and uh, no, Bob Ball tricked me and it was a completely innocent fallacious and I was surprised and, and I had a good time with it. I had a real good time and uh, the money's on the bed stand. <laughs> and uh, Bob, it's down to you. You have to pick between a Besedarian, Banjax and Snollygoster. Uh, what was that other one? There was one I was going to vote for. <laughs> uh, Banjax? Uh, the one that was containing a mistake. What was that one? Uh, I'm just... N- just Not true or accurate? Just no, just no. Like, no. You have to pick between... Embodying a fallacy? You have to pick between a Besedarian... Not, not embodying Banjax, a fallacy, but a fallacy. And Snollygoster. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead, um, since there's no way for me to win this week. Okay. Thanks, Internet. Where were you? Watching my back? No. Watching the last poop. time I trust fall into you guys. Watching <laughs> I'm, uh, gonna go ahead and vote for Banjax. Oh, yeah. Because there's no way that I can win with Fallacious. <laughs> and, uh, number two... Now let's go ahead and call it fallacious. No, you can't. You can't do that even for number two. <laughs> he wants you second have, place, guys. You can't even get second place. <laughs> you have to. Well, I mean, technically, you could you could tie for second, but you have to you have to pick another word between Abecedarian and Snollygoster. I'm going to go ahead and pick it because I think I gave the best definition no. for Abecedarian. Okay, there, good. All right, Abecedarian, and you also did it because that means it's a three-way tie for second, but the winner this week is me with Banjax. Such a great word. Thank you all for believing in me. Uh, you came in first, but we got a three-way. And, You're and, a scumbag. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you know, the, the true winner this week, Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. You, it's, it's been a pleasure. Uh, you, you, you have my number now, you, you sexy construction <laughs> worker. You, you left-handed hussy. I love it. <laughs> and if people, if people want to get in touch with us and just tell us how angry they are at the way that we've been depicting left-handed people, Bob, how do they do that? Or if you would like to tell us 
what pug you would like to use to wipe your butt with, you can send us an email, wordrango at gmail.com. You can also hit us up on Facebook and or Twitter, or or both. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to stop you. It's facebook.com slash wordrango, twitter.com slash wordrango. Uh, some tweet love from the past week uh, for Keith and Julia, for Drunk Dorks, The Optimism Club, Shimmy Double Zero, Crunk Fisted, Obo Crazy, Martin Winbet, Jeremy Lamont, John Perry, Brandon Newberger, Jacob Holden. You can also listen to this show on Stitcher and iTunes. I'm a Stitcher guy. Oh, oh. <laughs> we have a Stitcher person. That's yeah. great. <laughs> hey, somebody think... use the Stitcher. Fuck. All right. about... <laughs> now, now that's confirmed, I will continue supporting Stitcher because I had no clue. I really had no clue. I guess I haven't looked at any numbers for that, and I probably should start. But the thing that usually people use that does help us the most, it, it just seems to be the most popular choice for podcasts, is iTunes. If you go to bit.ly slash wordrango, it takes you straight to our iTunes page where they you can leave us a review with some words and five stars, and it does help us. And and and. Any any sort of rating stuff. I don't know if people even use Podcast Alley anymore. I don't even know if we're on it. Maybe we should get on that. People tell us, like, you know, I've had people say, like, what can I do to help? Well, one of the things you can do is share the show, just in general. And uh, we have, you know, there's bit.ly slash trywordrango. I think that's a thing, right, Bob? Uh, it is. And that, that, you know, we have different clips and stuff. It's mostly me, because I like me. Yes. But and, and, it's also some of the rest of you, too. And, and, and it's not just that, but we also have uh, clips that are on SoundCloud. We have soundcloud.com slash word. Yep. Oh, yep. We've got That's the Yachtubs. Get That's us on the Yachtubs. That's no yacht fallacy. And it's, it's pretty great. It's, uh, b- you know, being able to share clips with people, I think, is awesome. It, it helps get people into the show and understand, like, hey, we're gifting you guys awesome words each week. Things like a Abecedarian and Banjax. It's going to change your life. I know it's changed mine already. And uh, we have living proof on this show in our special guest this week, Eric. Once again, Eric, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And uh, and thank you guys, and congratulations once again to me and Banjax and to the world. This has been Word Rango. We'll be back next week with four more words and their definitions. Peace out. Word Rango. That's not it. It's literally podcasting is just a couple of dudes talking. The better ones include sound effects, courtesy of Bob. Like, that's the difference. <laughs> Ta-da!